Good morning again. Um, would anyone be willing to open us in prayer before we go into the Gospel of Luke? Let's pray. Heavenly. Hello. Okay. Thank you for adding one more day into our life. Lord, as we're going to study every details that we'll see, you help us and guide us to understand uh, deeply, O oh Lord. So you be our guide, you be our teacher, uh, Lord. In every word that we there is your hidden things, Lord. Help us to reach out to, till the hidden things. And Lord, let us be filled with your words and with your wisdom, Lord. This class I'm submitting to your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Um, so let's go in. Um, I think we... Uh, we had stopped at Luke 9. I've just posted the names for Luke 10 onwards. Um, so we can go ahead and continue looking through the outline of the Gospel of Luke. Um, Daniel, I think you posted here. Would you like to share? Uh, would you like to unmute and share? Okay, uh, sorry, I just saw your message. You're not able to unmute. Okay. Um, Daniel, you're doing Luke. Okay, there are two Daniels. I don't know if it's the same Daniel for both. And your name just got repeated. Let me just check. No, there are two Daniels, right? Um, Daniel Bayan, is that the right pronunciation? Sorry. Okay, I don't see him on the classroom, so I'll just do Luke 10 and uh, then read out what Daniel Oliver has posted on Luke 11. So uh, Luke 10, we see that uh, Jesus sends out, so previously Jesus had sent out the 12 disciples. Uh, now in Luke 10, we see that he sends out 72 disciples. So we don't see this in the other Gospels, this uh, number of disciples being sent out. Um, and here he again repeats the uh, instructions, don't take a purse, don't take a bag, uh, stay wherever people are willing to host you. Um, and then if people are not welcoming you, if a city doesn't welcome you, shake the dust off your feet and uh, move on to the next place. Um, so the shaking the dust off their feet was a sign of God's judgment upon that city. Uh, we then see that uh, the 72 returned, so verse 17, they returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Uh, so they come back with the report of how uh, how powerful the name of Jesus is and how they are able to see uh, that as they minister in Jesus' name, uh, they see uh, demons uh, come out, so people being freed from demonic oppression. Um, and then uh, Jesus says, rejoice in the fact that your name is written in the book of life, not in the fact that the demons submit to you, right? So that is our greatest joy, uh, that we are saved. Um, and then we see the parable of the Good Samaritan. So we talked about this earlier, where Luke uh, also includes the Gentiles a lot in his book. And so we see the Samaritan here as uh, being given a higher place than the priest and the Levite. Right. So the Samaritan is the one who takes care of the uh, Jew who's fallen by the side of the road. It's not the priest or the Levite. Uh, so uh, Luke uh, kind of highlights the Samaritan uh, at a level that is higher than even the Jewish leaders. And then we have the story of Mary and Martha uh, in Luke 10. We'll go into Luke 11. 
Uh, let me just read what Daniel has shared here. Uh, so Luke 11 begins with disciples asking Jesus to teach them to pray. Okay, and um, he uses examples of a friend persistently asking for help in need. Uh, and uh, through his teaching, disciples learn that uh, if they ask, seek, knock, their prayers will be answered. Uh, we also see Jesus casting out a mute demon, uh, people questioning his authority, uh, saying he's casting out uh, demons by the power of Beelzebub. And, um, and then Jesus responds to that, uh, to their uh, accusation. Uh, we also see Jesus talking about the power of God being revealed in the fact that he is casting out uh, Satan, um, that he is stronger than Satan himself. Um, he says that those who are not with him are against the word of God. The one who hears and keeps the word of God is blessed. Um, then Jesus uh, is invited to the house of a Pharisee. Uh, and in while he's there, he uh, talks about the Pharisees being uh, washed on the outside, but not on the inside, not being clean on the inside. Um, and then he also talks about looking for places of honor, uh, that uh, the Pharisees look for a place of honor, but, uh, but they shouldn't do that, because uh, when they're doing that, they are uh, seeking a place of honor for themselves. Rather, they should uh, go to a place uh, that is, when they're sitting down at a banquet, go to a place that is more humble and let the person who's invited them uh, move them to a place of greater honor. So those who are uh, who assume a place of humility will be the ones who are honored, and the ones who try to honor themselves will be the ones who are humbled. Uh, from there, let's go to Luke 12. Um, Diksha is doing Luke 12, OK. Luke 12, verse 1 to 3, like Jesus is giving the first several warning uh, about living under God's kingdom and not under the authority of Pharisees who have denied their Messiah. And in uh, verses 4 to 7, Jesus is telling that whom should we fear. He is telling we, we don't, we don't, we do not need to fear to man, but we should fear God because man can destroy only our body, but uh, God has all power to ca cast into hell. So we should we should fear God only. And in verse eight to twelve, Jesus is telling that in in this world, if we will accept Him before people, before man, then He will also accept us before the angels. Uh, because sometimes it happens like because of any authoritative people or authoritative man, we deny Jesus that we do not we do not know Jesus and we do not follow Him. But as Peter, Peter also did, uh, he denied three times. Uh, so, as uh, like because whenever situations will come like this, so Jesus is telling Holy Spirit will guide us and Holy Spirit will teach us what we have to say. So we should not fear and we do not worry all these things. And verse thirteen to twenty one. Jesus is telling that we should not be covetous or greedy. Like God will give us, uh, God will give us exceedingly and abundantly according to our need. It is fine, but we should not be re we should not we should not be rely on money or any uncertain things, uh, because if we will gather money or rely on money only, and uh, if next day we don't have a physical life, then what we will do that money? It's only no use of that. And if in verse 22 to 31, here Jesus is telling, do not worry for anything. Just rely on God. Keep trust in God. Because if we will worry, even then we cannot do anything. Like if we are worrying for something, we it's not in our hand. We cannot do anything. And one time I heard, I remember, in Joyce Mill, she was telling if we are worrying like 
it's somewhere it's coming is equal to a uh, pride because we are worrying so we are thinking somehow we can manage and somehow we can handle and we are not putting in god we are not keeping trust in god so he is telling we should not worry and all these things just yes. thank you uh thank you so look 13 uh deepu are you ready to share ah yes ma'am the yeah, gospel of luke chapter 13 and we see here from 1 to 5 it is meant to repent and not to judge so here we see that um, all the men are not great sinners but because of what happened to them but that all men are equally sinners and condemned before uh, uh, god and uh, so here jesus says that you know we have to repent otherwise uh, all shall like otherwise perish and we also see from uh, verse 6 to 9 the parable of a barren tree here we see uh, jesus once comes near to a fig tree uh, looking for a, a fruit but uh, found none and then you know uh, he will uh, command his uh, dresser of a vineyard um, uh, you know to to cut off the tree cut it down and then again uh, he will go and tell to the jesus addresser uh, you know uh, give me one more year so that you know we can we shall dig about it and uh, dung it and we'll see whether it it bear fruit or not then we can cut it down so that is the the parable that we see in this uh, verses and then uh, 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 the verses uh, 10 on which we see that the woman loosed from satan a woman with a disabled uh, disabling spirit we also see that you know um uh, once uh, the jesus was teaching in a synagogue on the sabbath day and uh, he found a woman uh, had a spirit of infirmity of for 18 years and she was bowed together and uh, uh, she could not lift up herself and then jesus saw her and called her out and um, um you know he immediately stretched and honored and uh, made her straight and she was completely delivered and the ruler of the synagogue come against the jesus asking uh, you know how you can um, uh, deliver uh, you know on the sabbath day then you know he will go on uh, say that you know you know if any donkey or ox um, you know Mm. I think that's verse fifteen, Luke thirteen fifteen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the Lord answered him, "You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the uh, manger and lead it away to water it?" So that is the example God gives to them. and uh, we also see from 18 to verses onwards uh, the parable of a mustard seed we see that uh, uh, what is the kingdom of god like um, uh, where and to shall i uh, resemble it it is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and cast into his garden and it grew and waxed a great tree and the flowers of the air are lodged in the branches of it and we also see from uh, verses 20 on which uh, the parable of leaven mm -hmm. and uh, we see from um, verses 22 on which warning against mere profession uh, from 22 to 27 then uh, we also see from uh, 28 on which the result of mere profession uh, 28 to 33 and then we see from 34 onwards uh, jesus weeps over jerusalem uh, predicts its uh, over thank you thank, thank you dear sister uh verse uh, chapter 14 divya
Okay, I'll just uh, do Luke chapter 14. So um, in Luke chapter 14, Jesus is at a Pharisee's house and they are watching him carefully to see if uh, Jesus will heal on the Sabbath day. Uh, but Jesus still goes ahead. He again uses the example of an ox. So if you have an ox uh, and it falls into a well, will you not? pull it out on the Sabbath day. Um, and they don't answer the question uh, that he has. Um, here is where he tells them when you're on, uh, when you're invited to a place uh, for a banquet, don't sit in a place of honor, rather choose a, a place that is humble and uh, let the person who's invited you uh, call you to sit at a place of honor. Uh, then he also shares about when you are hosting people, host uh, people who cannot repay you instead of inviting your friends and family who will just invite you back to their parties, invite people who cannot repay you uh, and uh, your reward will be in heaven. Um, he then gives the parable of the great banquet um, and he talks about how people who've, invite, who've been invited to this wedding banquet come up with excuses uh, for why they can't come to the banquet. And so finally, the master sends out a servant to invite anyone on the streets uh, to join in the banquet. Um, and those who the original invitation went to are rejected because they've rejected the invitation to be part of it. So that is a judgment on the Jews specifically because um, the call to the kingdom went out to the Jews first, uh, but because they rejected it, it then goes out to the Gentiles and uh, goes out to anyone who's willing to receive the gospel. Um, Jesus then talks about the cost of being a disciple, so to take up a cross and follow him. Um, and uh, he said he talks about counting the cost right so before we decide to follow christ counting the cost uh, and making a decision knowing about the sacrifice that it's going to uh, require of us. So we do not make a decision to build a house without first considering the cost of building the house. Uh, we make sure that that project will be completed. So in the same way, when we are uh, deciding to follow Christ, uh, are we considering the cost of following him and then making that decision? Uh, so Jesus doesn't um, invite people uh, showing himself or the kingdom as something that will satisfy uh, and be a comfortable situation for everyone. He very clearly presents the call to discipleship as one of sacrifice and suffering. Uh, we see that in Luke 14. Um, Luke 15, uh, do we, I don't know if we, Dr. Buyenza is not on call. Um, so Luke 15 is the parable of the lost sheep. So this whole um, chapter is on people who are lost being found. So we have the lost sheep, the lost coin, uh, the, uh, the prodigal son. Uh, these three parables where Jesus is talking about the rejoicing in heaven over uh, someone who is lost being found and being welcomed back. Uh, so um, he uses these three examples of the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the uh, prodigal son. Now, in all of these parables, he's actually going completely against the sentiments of the religious leaders uh, because they would not be able to identify with the importance of one coin being lost. They would not be able to identify with shepherds who've lost sheep because uh, shepherds were considered as uh, people who were lower in status um, and they would not be able to identify with the father who forgave his son who had dishonored him. Uh, in all of these parables, Jesus uh, is preaching something that is very, um, very opposite to the religious leaders' ways of thinking. Uh, but in doing so, he's presenting the heart of the Father, and he's also presenting the gospel to the outcasts of the society. So the poor, 
the shepherds uh, and those who are sinners, those who are uh, outsiders in the religious system. Um, Luke 16, I believe uh, Elder Eric is not here. He posted on Google Classroom, but I don't think he answered the question there. Uh, so we look at Luke 16 as well. Um, Luke 16, we have the parable of the shrewd manager. So uh, he's been mismanaging uh, the money of his master, and the master sees that he's doing this, and so he uh, basically is going to let him go from his role as manager. But before he is let go off, he calls all the debtors and cuts down their debts by half uh, so that he has friends once he's let go off. And so uh, Jesus uses this example to say, uh, use your world, use worldly wisdom to your advantage, right? So the world knows how to use money to gain friends for themselves. Uh, but uh, people of the people who follow him or people of the kingdom, uh, sometimes we can be too simple in our thinking. We don't think shrewdly. We don't think uh, in ways that uh, that are advantageous, ways that we can use uh, our monetary wealth uh, to gain things for ourselves. And so he's uh, commending the manager for using his wealth to gain earthly friends, uh, to gain advantage here on earth. And he says, use your wealth in this way. Don't, uh, don't try and store up all your wealth. Use it so that uh, it can actually bear eternal benefit. This manager uses it for his own benefit, but you use your money for eternal benefit. Um, some other teachings are on divorce, uh, so teaching against adultery. Then the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, uh, where the rich man is judged for not taking care of the poor. So we see here in Luke that uh, continued theme of uh, care for the poor, uh, the heart for the poor, which we talked about earlier, where uh, Luke is very concerned about the social outcasts. Um, Luke 17, uh, 17 and 18, I have, yeah, we have Esther Clement and Esther Shisha. Are you all uh, ready to share Luke 17 and 18? Uh, Mr. Clement, I'm ready to share uh, Luke 18, sister. OK, sure. Uh, and uh, uh, what about Esther uh, Shisha, Luke 17? OK, let me just, uh, we'll just do Luke 17, and then uh, Sister Esther Clement, you can do Luke 18. So Luke uh, 17, uh, it continues in Jesus' teaching. So he's teaching on, um, on not being a stumbling block to people and the judgment uh, that would be uh, uh, that uh, someone who causes someone else to stumble would be under judgment. Um, then he talks about faith as small as a mustard seed. Uh, then we have the story of the 10 men healed of leprosy, and the only one who comes back to thank Jesus again is a Samaritan. Uh, so the only leper who comes back and worships Jesus after being healed is a Samaritan. Uh, Jesus then talks about the coming kingdom. Uh, and he says that uh, do not be led astray when somebody says that uh, they are the Messiah, because when the Son of Man returns, uh, everyone will know. He'll return, and uh, it'll be something that is revealed to the whole world at the same time. So don't run after false messiahs. Uh, and then he talks about the signs of the end times. Uh, with that, we can go into Luke 18, Sister Esther Clement. 
Yes. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Like Sister has told in the summary of the entire book of Luke, there are three parables uh, with respect with regard to prayer. So in chapter 18, we see two parables uh, referring to the prayer and how we are supposed to pray. So the first parable is that of an unjust judge who neither feared God nor respected man. So even then, when a woman widow persisted, he uh, gave her the judgment. So verse 8 says that, will not God defend more speedily uh, and uh, uh, if we ask him and persist in prayers? And uh, he says, uh, uh, very sad uh, note here that, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find the faith on the earth? So this is the takeaway for us from this parable that we need to be persistent in prayer and have faith or that he is able to deliver us, defend us speedily. So coming to the second parable, which is also regarding prayer, uh, uh, between the prayer of a Pharisee and a tax collector. Uh, the Pharisee was very uh, self-righteous and he began uh, saying that uh, he is not like this tax collector and end ends up comparing that way. But however, the tax collector uh, was asking God to forgive him of his sins. And Jesus said that the tax collector was the one who was justified. And he continues to say in verse 14 that one who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself shall be exalted. And then we have a few instances uh, of Jesus on his journey towards Jerusalem. Uh, the disciples do not allow the little children to come to him. So uh, Jesus, uh, on the contrary to the disciples' expectations, he uh, says, the welcome the kingdom. Of the, uh, I say that in verse 17, whoever does not accept and receive and welcome the kingdom of God as a little child shall not in any way enter in it at all. So this is about the uh, take of uh, what God feels about the children and the kingdom of God. Coming to verses 18, uh, you have the uh, young rich ruler who wanted to inherit the kingdom of God. But however, uh, when Jesus asked him to sell his positions and give up, give them to the poor, he he departed being very worried and sorrowful as he was exceedingly rich. So observing him, Jesus says this very uh, common um, uh, this thing that how is it possible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? However, uh, when the disciples asked who will be saved, then then in verse twenty seven, Jesus replies, uh, "What is impossible with man is possible with God." And uh, then we have the uh, Jesus talking about uh, the prophesying about his uh, uh, to the Jerusalem and. However, in 34, we see that the disciples did not understand anything, even though he was telling them very clearly that he will be flogged, he will be killed, and the third day he will rise again. Uh, it is written here in 34 that the words were a mystery and hidden uh, to the uh, uh, disciples uh, because they were not able to comprehend what he was telling. And finally, we see uh, a blind beggar uh, on a way to Jericho. So again, the people, he was shouting, the son of David, have mercy upon me. And the people around him rebuked him uh, not to shout, uh, but uh, he, he persisted even more. And uh, Jesus took notice of him and called him and asked him uh, in verse 41, what do you want me to do for you? And uh, he said that he may receive sight. So God was very, Jesus was very pleased with his uh, faith. And he said, uh, receive your sight, your faith and your trust uh, has healed you. So this is a brief summary about uh, chapter 18 uh, of Luke. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Uh, Luke 19, I think Frederick is not here. So um, we'll just look at that. So we have... Uh, the story about Zacchaeus, um, where Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus repents and uh, begins to follow Jesus. So Zacchaeus is a tax collector uh, and has been extorting money from people. But once he encounters Jesus, he uh, returns four times the amount that he has taken from people uh, as a sign of his repentance. And Jesus... Uh, Jesus says that salvation has come to uh, this house today. Uh, 
Um, we then see the parable of the ten miners. This is uh, where a master gives his servants a certain sum of money to each of them. And then when he comes back, um, this is the same as the parable of the talents, right? So uh, each of them comes back to return what they have uh, got from the money that he uh, gave to them. So the person with five comes back with ten. Uh, the person with three comes back with six. And the person um, with one comes back with one. I'm sorry, that math is not adding up. So I'm just uh, so. Let me just go. Yeah, so while the while the master's way, so this is the addition to this story. While the master's way, his subjects, verse 14, uh, who hated him, sent a delegation saying, we don't want this man to be king. Uh, but he is still made king, and then he comes back. Um, and yeah, so sorry, uh, verse 16. Uh, the one with 10 earns 10 more, and so he's given charge of 10 cities. Uh, the one with 5 has 5 more, and so he takes charge of 5 cities. Um, and then um, the one who was given only one uh, didn't do anything with it, and he just sold it. And so uh, what he has is also taken away from him. So he says, uh, if you're faithful uh, with much, you will be even more will be given to you. But if you don't, if you're not faithful with the little, uh, what you have also will be taken away. And those who didn't want the master to be king are then put to death. Uh, so this is a little different from the parable of the talents. Um, we then see Jesus coming in on the donkey, being acknowledged as uh, the Messiah. Um, so we have that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, uh, that recognition that Jesus has uh, come uh, from God himself. And then uh, at the end is the judgment on the temple, where Jesus goes into the temple. Um, let me just open that, sorry. Uh, and he uh, sends out all those who are uh, selling things. He says, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers, quoting from the Old Testament. Uh, so again, uh, Jesus is uh, displaying his authority over the temple at this time. Uh, Luke 20, Sister Gertrude, are you ready to share? Yes, sister. OK, you can go ahead. Uh, Luke 20, in this chapter, we see that the leaders and the priests are seeking to accuse Jesus in many ways to destroy him. But Jesus triumphs over them because of his wisdom. Luke 20 to 21 to 8 here, because he drove all those who were who brought and sold in the temple, uh, he says that this is the house of my prayer the chief priests and scribes confronted jesus asking what authority he was doing all things or who gave him authority luke 21 to 16 jesus asked the baptism of john was it from uh, god or was it from men and replying them with the question he explained that he he's uh, uh, he is the Messiah and exposes hypocrisy of the leaders. If John was from God, then he was right in proclaiming Jesus as a Messiah. And true to Jesus had all the authority. In response, he showed that they were not uh, sincere in seeking the truth. In Luke 9, uh, Luke uh, 29 to 16, parable of the tenant represent the religious leaders among the Jewish people. The parable tells us that God is the owner of the whole universe. He sent his uh, servants, that is the prophets in the Old Testament, and then he sent his son so that they will honor and respect him. But they killed the son so the inheritance would be theirs. This parable tells us that Jesus himself was the son of God and he knew that he would be killed. 
Luke 20, 17 to 18, another parable, the stone which his builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Psalms 118, Jesus taught his disciples of the coming of Messiah to Jerusalem. The hostility of the Jewish leaders showed the Messianic stone being rejected. Anyone who comes to Jesus will be broken of the pride and self-will but those who refuse to come will be crushed by Christ's judgment, and all the more they sought to destroy him. Luke 20, 21 to 26, Jesus tells to give back to the things of God and think to Caesar. The scribes and the priests try to make accusations against Jesus to the ruling government, but cannot find fault in Jesus. Luke 20, 27 to 40, Jesus teaches about resurrection. The Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection and try to find fault in Jesus' teaching. But Jesus tells them that God is not the God of the dead but living, and the sons of the resurrection do not marry but are like angels. Luke 20, 41 to 40, whose son is Christ, Jesus asked. How is it possible that David, who calls Christ Lord, and he is his son asking their own question. Luke 20, 45 to 47, Jesus teaches his disciples to be aware of the scribes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sister. So uh, Luke 21, I don't think it was here. Um, Luke 21, uh, Jesus looks at the widow's offering. So she puts in two coins versus all of the rich people who give just a little bit of what they have. She gives everything she has. And Jesus says she's given more uh, than all of the rich people had put in the uh, put in the temple uh, offering box. Um, and then the rest of Luke 21 is about the signs of the end times. Uh, Jesus uh, prepares his disciples for what to expect. Uh, so for the wars that will come, for the persecution that they will face. Uh, and uh, he calls them to remain faithful, to uh, stand on guard and be prepared, keep watch uh, for his return. Uh, Luke 22 is Jairam here. Yeah. OK. Uh, Luke 22, uh, the festival of unleavened bread. Uh, so this is where uh, Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Uh, then we have the story of the Last Supper uh, with the disciples. Um, and uh, Jesus is teaching on seeking to be uh, the one who serves rather than seeking to be the greatest. He teaches the disciples about this. Uh, and he talks to Simon about uh, having prayed for Simon. So he says that uh, Satan has, wants to uh, test all of you, but I've prayed for you. Um, and when you have returned, go back and strengthen the rest of your brothers. So uh, this is where Simon says that I will go, I will die with you. And Jesus predicts Simon's denial. Um, Jesus then goes to the Mount of Olives and he prays. Uh, he goes uh, with uh, his three disciples and asks them to pray with him, but they keep falling asleep. And uh, finally, Judas arrives uh, with uh, with the people from the religious leaders, the um, and they capture Jesus and take him to um, to Caiaphas's house. So they, uh, sorry, I'm just opening, yeah, to the house of the high priest. So Annas, um, and then we have the record of Jesus uh, being mocked, Jesus being beaten. Um, Jesus facing trial before Pilate and Herod. Uh, and um, this is where they ask Jesus if he is the Messiah. Uh, and he says, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. And uh, then he says, from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. 
um, then they asked him, are you the son of God? He says, you say that I am. And they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Uh, so uh, they question on whether he is the Messiah, whether he's the son of God, and that's the end of his uh, trial. So Jesus doesn't say much in response, but um, because he doesn't dispute those questions that they raise, uh, they, uh, they accuse him of blasphemy. Uh, Luke 23, I don't think Jennifer is here. Okay, so we'll continue. So uh, the whole assembly rose and led, uh, took him to Pilate for his trial. Uh, Pilate doesn't find any charge, uh, any basis for a charge against uh, Jesus, uh, but he sends him off to Herod. Uh, and Herod also mocks Jesus and sends him back. So it's recorded here that until this day, Herod and Pilate had been enemies, but they become friends on this day over this trial because they both um, they both uh, come to this place of mocking Jesus and uh, and finally sentencing him um, although they don't find any basis for charges against him um, so Barabbas is released and Jesus is sentenced to be crucified um, and it says that uh, Pilate he tries to talk to the people and say, we've not found any basis, but he finally decides to go with what they are demanding, that he be crucified. Um, then we have the record of Simon of Cyrene carrying the cross. Um, and we have the record of the death of Jesus. Uh, here we uh, read about Jesus being on the cross for three hours, uh, the curtain of the temple being torn, um, and uh, then we also read about Jesus uh, committing himself into the Father's hands. Uh, the centurion recognizes Jesus as a righteous man. And then we have uh, the record of the women who were there at the cross and the final burial of Jesus uh, by Joseph, who was a part of the council. So the uh, women follow Joseph to see where Jesus is uh, buried in the tomb, and then they leave. Uh, they leave there and uh, go back because it's the next day is the Sabbath. Uh, Luke twenty four. Luke chapter twenty four. Jesus crucified, and the third day he rose again. Verse 2, they found the stone rolled away from the spiritual. Verse 4, and it come to pass as the where such expected there were about, behold, two men stood by them in sinning garments. Verse 6, he is not there, but he is raising. Remember who he is speaking to the wind. He was here in Galilee. Verse 7, saying, the Son of Man must have been delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. It, and they remember his word. 23, and we have, and we, they found not his body. They come saying that they had also seen a version of Angel, which and said that he was alive. 26. Out not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into this glory. 34. Saying the Lord is risen indeed and hand apart to Simon. 36. And as they to speak, Jesus himself stood in the minds of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that is his wife, myself, handle me, and see for my spirit 
hath not pleased and beyond as ye see me have verse 49 and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but try ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be hidden with power upon high 51 and it's come to pass where he blessed them he was spread from them and crashed up to heaven thank you so uh, with that we come to the end of the gospel of luke uh, we will just uh, read a little bit uh, more from our textbook about uh, some additional content i think we just have two minutes so we'll see how much we can cover um, okay uh, so uh, Luke, uh, Luke's teaching on the Holy Spirit, uh, along with other teaching on the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, we see uh, that the Holy Spirit is one with the Father and the Son in the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the Comforter. Uh, and uh, we have a much fuller revelation of who the Holy Spirit is in the New Testament than we do in the Old Testament, although the Old Testament does mention the Holy Spirit, uh, definitely mentions the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see in uh, the Gospels the Holy Spirit at Jesus' conception and uh, the Holy Spirit as the one empowering Jesus' ministry, uh, especially in the Gospel of Luke where uh, Luke is presenting the humanity of Christ. Uh, we see that the Holy Spirit is the one who enables Jesus to carry out all of the work, uh, uh, all of the ministry that is entrusted to him. Um, the Holy Spirit is also promised to the disciples as their source of power. Uh, and uh, for us today, the Holy Spirit leads us to understand, to obey God's will. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives us power over sin. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, the one through whom we... Uh, are in this new covenant so we are in a covenant of uh, that is sealed by the holy spirit um, and we can respond to the holy spirit's prompting and we are transformed by the holy spirit uh, so we'll continue from there uh, on monday and we'll uh, start with the gospel of john as well thank you all